Hello everyone, this is Satvik and in this video we will be discussing about IDOR vulnerability. So without getting any delay, let's dive into the video. Guys, first of all, really really thank you for all your support. If you want to connect to me personally, you can check out my Twitter and the LinkedIn. The links are in the description below. And if you want to be part of my community, do check out my discord server the link is in the description below so guys uh, this video as i told you earlier is regarding a cool vulnerability which is named as idor vulnerability the reason i am trying to reproduce this video is like i recently reported a uh, five to six vulnerabilities which are based on this particular section idors okay so this is simple okay so this is simple you can uh, try to find this out simply okay so let me let's go to this part so that like a technical part okay so in so so the abbreviation of idor is insecure direct object reference so for that to make this uh, understand easily you need to learn you need to know about classes and objects okay so like if you are a bit familiar with object oriented programming lock or oops then you would have known that okay so i'll go simple here so let us assume there is a class called as man okay so this particular class is nothing but a blueprint okay let us assume that you are building a home so you like you don't always go directly you take you don't take bricks cement and you try to build that right you, you, you need to make some blueprint or what should be there what should not be there so class in the sense it is like a blueprint okay remember like that and this particular blueprint of a man what can he do he can run okay he can walk okay he can talk like there there are many uh, functions and stuff like that okay so this particular class man has many functions that he can do okay but if you take so let us assume that there are two persons so satvik and sai so these two are persons right in the sense they are man okay so what you can say like satvik is also a man so he can run walk talk etc and like that you can take everything like that okay so these are nothing but objects okay so objects are nothing but like you try to reproduce something from that particular class okay let us assume that we made a blueprint for a home a simple home you can try to build a new home so that is going to be your object Okay, from a single class, you can uh, almost make as many replicas as possible. Okay, example like that. Okay, so this is a simple example. Okay, so if you, if, uh, so now let's try to break this stuff. Okay, so this is regarding class and object. Okay, so I leave, I leave down some few best resources that you can learn regarding class objects and this object oriented programming stuff. So this particular concept OOP is necessary for every uh, professional uh, who every cyber security guy who want to work or who want to work on a uh, web application projects. Okay, it can be bug bound or anything like that. Okay, I leave down some best resources. You can do check them out from there. So if you can see here insecure in the sense it is not secure right and direct it's going to be direct and object reference so now let me come like this okay so let us assume that there is a web application okay so there is an application like uh, attendance so there is an attendance app uh, for employees so what you can do is like the employees can log in and they can see what are uh, what are their salaries etc like that and also they can post their attendance okay so let us assume that the employees uh, will be something like this so emp employee one his id can be something like one two three four okay emp two's uh, id can be one two three five and etc like that okay so if you if you are a bit familiar with this programming and all this stuff then what like if you want to develop some application then how you should write is like if i log in as an emp1 let us let me assume that i am emp1 here okay if i logged in as an emp1 to fill my attendance i should only do my task i shouldn't go to some other emps like you, you can be the emp2 here Okay, I shouldn't log into here or I shouldn't be able to see your personal data or anything like that. 
but if i am able to see it then it is a serious vulnerability right i can see your phone if, if it can if, if it might contain some credit card details i can view them right so this should not happen okay so this is nothing but an indirect insecure sorry uh, idor vulnerability means like i am able to view other stuff as well like this can be a bit uh, similar to broken access control as well like where you can see other stuff etc like that which we are not intended to but idor mostly the same okay this is what happens so let us assume that uh, so now let's go to a small practical and uh, i'll show you uh, how it really works in the real life okay uh, so guys so this is a cheat sheet kind of stuff for this uh, idor thing so i'll leave the link for this also in the description below so it can it is easy for you to understand like uh, if you want to uh, like if you want if you are like developing some jdbs applications or anything like that so i'll leave the link for this uh, resource as well in the description below so now guys coming to the application so this is the apl test application that we are going to i'm going to show so if you can see this is a, a test application as it told earlier it is named as zero bank okay here guys if you can see there is some account activity here okay so there is a tab called as account activity so if you can see let me copy this url here let's go here you can see there is a, a there is a version and there is the domain there are some subdirectories and some fi file called as uh, account activity.html and there is a parameter called as account id equals to 2 so if you can see earlier if you observe like if you understood the uh, concept clearly so we shouldn't be we should be able to see only the details of this particular id whose id is 2 like you shouldn't be able to see the other user stuff right so now if you can see if you edit this thing a little bit now you can see like we got some uh diff a person like different kind of stuff like of different user like this you can go on like three like you can view all this stuff like my intention is to tell you like this is how things happen but this is not only a way the thing that i had shown you is like uh you can't find this kind of thing like by simply changing the id uh, or by simply changing the parameter on a url doesn't work all the time so so if you want to deep dive a bit so there is something called as proxies here a proxy such as burp uh, or you can go with zap anything is fine so if you can see the requests and responses like you might not always find uh, this particular uh, like you can't always find straightforward like in order to report so but you need to view some different requests and responses okay you need to test with some various parameters okay you need to test with some parameters you need to test like change the values and do like that okay uh, parameters and then also like mostly you need to look for the get requests okay mostly you'll try to find for the get request okay so get in the sense you're getting something it's a kind of http request so mostly look into this okay uh so that's the thing so uh like uh one company that i recently reported is like there is a cart option so it is like a vegetable uh, or you can call it like a kind of big basket kind of application so what i done is like so once i am uh, like uh, while i'm purchasing some stuff so like uh, when you add to cart it is going to uh, add to your particular cart right but uh, what happens is like i was able to view the cart of other users as well by simply playing with these parameters uh, through the help of proxies like burp or zap so it's always an easy go to find like the thing that i told you is like simple but uh, you need to dig deep in order to find this out okay now coming to the mitigation part okay so mitigation or anything like that so mitigation like how you can prevent this so the first thing the first important thing is like session management uh, session management like uh, in order to access the an object okay in order to access the details of other users or anything like that the application should properly check whether the logged in person is related to that guy okay uh, related to that or not okay if not it should be done 
you can use like cookies jwt token uh, jwt tokens etc like that okay and uh, also the thing is like uh, the one thing that uh, like you can possibly do is like you should all you should, uh, it is not always a good way to give like this okay like a simple numericals or a value like you need to add some you need to do some concatenation with some strings and if you try to do a hash then it would be much more harder in order to uh, find this vulnerability out so those are some th that is related to idor guys so this is uh, up to my understanding only so as i told you earlier i reported few ones and uh, I'm trying to reproduce the stuff, but if I'm wrong or if I'm not correct, do let me know where I'm wrong in the comments below. So that is it guys for today's video. I hope you really liked the video and if you really liked it, make sure to like the video and also do share with your friends who are really interested in this stuff. So this is Satvik signing off and I'll meet you in the next video. Thank you.